said, $10 at the door, take whatever I want. Yes, please. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Lori. Welcome back to Time Traveling Treasures. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. I am glad you made it by. I am a vintage and antique collector slash reseller, and I do thrift hauls, estate sale hauls, shop with me videos, and I would love to have you join us. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing so that you can find your way back again. So, <laughs> I went to an estate sale and it was pay $10 at the door and take whatever you want. Now, let me back up a minute because I am on a text messaging list for a lot of the different estate sale companies in the area. And if they have like a special thing going on or like a closeout thing, um, they'll send this out, this text message out. So I got the text message and I said, $10 at the door, take whatever I want. Yes, please. <laughs> I will absolutely, absolutely be there. So I showed up and I had my fellow with me and I had my sister with me. So I actually spent $20 at the door for me and my guy, but he's really good about looking around and, and finding things. Because let me tell you, when you go in there, there are people just scrambling everywhere. So there's really not a lot of time to stop and research and look and check this. And is this worth it? You just grab it and you put it in a box and you put it in your car and you just check it out later because worst case scenario, I donate it and it goes on to someone, hopefully that route. But a lot of things you see, I don't know. Estate sales are different for me because you kind of feel more connected to the person that it belonged to. And you know that these pieces meant something to someone and just being able to see them in their environment. I don't know. It kind of like sparks something to where I just want to save it. I just want to rescue it. So I just went in there and grabbed a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of people getting furniture. So I just tried to stay out of their way and just look through my, my kind of thing. But I, I ended up with a really big box. It's back here. <laughs> really big box. And then two smaller boxes. The van was full. So I've pretty much spent most of the week processing it and getting it all sorted and researching what needed to be researched and organizing everything so that I could get ready to list it. Before I did, I wanted to hop on here and show you guys the incredible haul that I got from this estate sale. So let's get started. I saw this, they had in the garage, they had a section of Christmas stuff and holiday stuff, which kind of makes sense. That's usually where the Christmas stuff is at estate sales because people have like the storage and stuff. But I got this plate. And this is by an artist, uh, Briard, and he does a lot of other artwork, but for a while there were, this is kind of like a, a plastic or like a melamine kind of plate. And it's in really good condition. It's a little yellowed from age, but this pattern is part of the night before Christmas and it's got Santa Claus wrapping packages and he's just getting ready. He's getting ready for Christmas. Is anyone else getting ready for Christmas or is it too soon? Is it too soon? I mean, the pumpkin has just come out. So, you know, when the pumpkin comes out, that means Christmas is coming because that's how we do things, right? Pumpkin comes out, it's time to go shopping for Christmas. On to the next thing. This is a crystal plate. It's actually etched with the name on the back of it. These are salad plates and they do pretty well for resale value. I only have the one, but I thought they were like a neat crescent shaped 
salad plate. And these are Val St. Lambert. I got a lot of etched glass, crystal, clear glass, pressed glass, glass, glass. <laughs> I got a lot. And I that's mainly been what my research has been on because a lot of the patterns I'm not really familiar with. And there are a few pieces that are of the same pattern. So that took some time to research. Uh, that will be in video number two. So make sure you check out the following video. I'm going to have to do this in two parts because there's a lot. But make sure you stay around for the second video because there's a whole lot of really, really unique, interesting pieces. Okay. I got these juice glasses. And these are Anchor Hawking. And it's Hildy. They have a lot of different styles and designs that were put out, but I couldn't find any that were, I'm guessing these are peaches or apricots. It's a peachricot. It's a peachricot. <laughs> so, so these I thought were really neat. I have three of these. I really wish I had four and I actually looked online to see if I could find a fourth one because I like to sell things in even numbers. It just does better, odd numbers. Maybe I can say I have a pair and then an extra one in case they get broken. I think that would work. Maybe. Okay, let's talk about these little sets. So, Aren't these adorable? I really do well with these. When and only when the cup, right here, I see the cup, matches the saucer. It doesn't. The, <laughs> the cups don't match the saucers. Same thing with this one. The cup doesn't match the saucers. But when you are running through this house and trying to grab things, you're not looking to see if the cups match the saucer. You just say, oh, I'm getting that. I know what that is. That's Limoges. I'm getting it. So move out of the way. <laughs> Actually, people were, people were really nice. And I was too. I was very nice. So these are Havland Limoges. So I am going to sell these probably as replacements because things happen. The cat knocks down the china minor earthquakes, things happen. Kids run into the house, shelves break. I don't know, things happen, right? So maybe I was meant to go to that estate sale to find these in case someone has a catastrophe and loses their saucer. I got you, I'm here for you. On to the big item. I got a lot of dishes of the same pattern. It was her, I'm guessing it's her china pattern. It's Nortaki. It's from the 50s, 60s. Let me try and find a good piece to show you. Uh, it's a 12-piece play setting plus accessories. So I don't have all of them out here on the table because I honestly would not be able to fit anything else on the table. So I have one piece of each to show you the different pieces that I got. It's called Oriental is the pattern, but it's a bamboo. And I like this because a lot of times the Nortaki has the really fancy, I call it the grandma border, <laughs> you know, like the, the really heavy flowered, scrolled, scalloped design border, but this is really clean and kind of mid-century, modern, clean lines. So I think that this will do really well for integrating into current styles. So that's why I picked it up. If it had been some of the heavily decorated ones, probably not 
as quick to pick it up. But I guarantee you for $20, I, I think I did okay for all of this stuff. So I went ahead and got this. So I have salad plate. I have dinner plate. Cup and saucers. The dessert bowls, which dessert bowls always do really well for me. Uh, I guess because they're not a lot of people don't have them with their place settings, so they are considered more of like an accessory piece. And I think people like having them to kind of complete the set. And I have the salad bowl, soup bowl, salad bowl. This is, this is an ashtray. Okay, um, I have thoughts. Do you have thoughts? I guess, now I would see these to be used, I've also seen these listed, people sell them as a tea, you know, a place to put your tea bag when you're having tea time, or people will call them a bone dish. There's been various ways that they've been listed, but Officially, through Nortaki, these are ashtrays. I don't know if these are supposed to go with a tea set or people have them next to their plates while they're at the dinner table smoking. I'm guessing that might have been a thing. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't imagine. But I know. Here they are. I know these are ashtrays. But they can be used for many different things. You know, you could put lemon on there. You could put all kinds of things, like little mints, I don't know, things next to you. And I have the creamer. And the sugar. A gravy boat. And this is just an oval serving bowl. I probably will not be reselling this. It has a pretty significant scar on it from an accident that happened at some point in its life. And while we all should love and appreciate our scars, this guy is probably going to be retired. Um, he's, he's going on disability. So it's a nice bowl, but with a chip, I just, nah, I'm not sure what I'll do with it. I might just give it to the thrift store and see if there's someone else that wants to take it. I have a small oval serving plate. And... Let me see if I can get this guy. A really big serving platter. Now, they're still dirty. I haven't cleaned them up yet. I, I honestly just literally pulled these out of the box to do the video. So they still have to be cleaned up and listed. But the platters do really well for me. A lot of people will buy the platters or the serving pieces, the accessory pieces, of a pattern and put it with their white dishes. So you could buy just a standard white set of dishes and then by swapping out the accessory pieces or the salad plates, you can completely change it up and make it seasonal or just however you wanna decorate for that 
evening's dinner. If my light keeps going in and out, it's because it's very overcast right now and it's rainy, but the sun peaks through every great now and then, so it's kind of making my, my light wonky. So the next piece I saw that I had to take with me was this gravy boat. This is Austrian piece. And this is O and E G, which is Oscar and Edgar Gunther's. It, it says it's a gravy boat, but I think it's more of it's kind of universal. It doesn't have an underplate. There would be like an underplate here. I think that this would be a cute little uh, candy dish, candy bowl, nut bowl, a dresser bowl. I could see a lot of different uses for this. And these do resell very well, even without the underplate. So I was very surprised to find this piece. This is Portugal. Uh, it was designed for a company in San Francisco called Gumps, and they went out of business for a while, and they've recently reopened under new owners. They're very high-fashioned accessory pieces, decor. Uh, they have really, really beautiful pieces. So this is a piece of pottery from Portugal, but it is very desirable. And it came with this, do you see, this floral foam stuff. So I'm going to have to get this out and clean it out real good because I don't think anyone's going to want to open up a package with this floral foam all over everywhere. Although it really would be good insulation you know, for packing. No, I don't, I don't think so. I don't always get books. Sometimes I get books. This probably isn't a book that I would normally pick up. I'll pick up books if they're around the late 1800s, early 1900s, depending on the subject matter, the condition. I'm really, really picky about books. I, I only got this book because of the topic, and I thought it would be interesting and an interesting read. They don't sell for a whole lot, and there's a lot out there. Uh, but it's Hoyle's Games, so it has a lot of different types of information on gaming and uh, playing backgammon and checkers. So I thought it'd be neat to uh, have like a lot of cards, and sometimes I like to have game nights, and I thought it would be neat to learn some different games from the past that people used to play and give them a try and see how they do. Uh, this book was was published in 1940, but the original copyright is 1934. So I know there has to be some, they're time traveling games is what they are. So I'm gonna give this a check, see what kind of games I can find in it. And we have made it. We are on to the last piece of this video. So you're gonna have to come back and see what I got for the second video, because I think it's probably gonna be bigger than this one. I hope it'll all fit on the table. Now when I got this, I had me in mind. Because you know you, you know you have to. You know, if I'm doing all that work and running around trying to find stuff, I had to get something for myself. But then I noticed that these are reselling for around $45 to $50. So I don't know. I don't know. But I love it because I love cherries. And this is not vintage antique. This was purchased at Kohl's for 20 bucks. 
at Sonoma Lifestyles. This isn't, you know, anything super fancy. It's got crazy on it. Um, so I might keep it. I really want to keep this. I don't know if I would necessarily use this as a casserole, but maybe for um, some kind of something. I think it would be really pretty. Don't you think this would be pretty in my kitchen? I know you've never seen my kitchen, but imagine a kitchen. Any kitchen will do. Don't you think this would be pretty in it? Yeah. This, this was picked up for me, but I'm still deciding. I think I'm going to keep it. I, this is the crazing. I'm going to keep it because it's, it's got crazing on it, right? I can't resell that. You know, that's not true because I still sell, I sell stuff with crazing all the time. But probably not a newer piece with crazing. Usually the older pieces. People want like the older antique with the pretty crazing pattern. Now they even mimic crazing on pieces. Some of the newer pieces, they'll actually like, I don't know if they paint it on. Or if it's a sticker that they do before the glazing, I don't know. But a lot of things you'll see in a Cracker Barrel when they have the, the pieces that they sell and they've got the crazing pattern and I just kind of smile. Because I'd rather have the original crazing. That's that's what I'd like to have. Oh, wait. I forgot. There's one more thing. There are four things, but it's one set. I got these little um, all gratin bowls. And there's four of them, but they're not, they're the same, but they're not the same. So there's three of them that are uh, made in China, Cordon Bleu. And they look similar to this last one. See, they look almost identical. As you can see, there's there's just the slightest little difference in the, the scalloped edging here. This one is actually made in France. This is Peel de Vie. This is worth a little bit more than the one made in China. Big surprise. So I'll probably sell this one separate. And I don't know if I'm going to keep these because these would be really good to do scallops in or shrimp scampi or all gratin potatoes because they're all gratin bowls. Um, little mini things of pasta. I'm getting hungry now, so I'm not coming up with any more ideas because I'm getting hungry. But probably going to keep the three, and then I'll sell this one that is a little bit fancier. And that is honestly the last of it. Yeah, that's the last of it. So thank you so much for sticking with me and seeing what I got at this estate sale. I really think it would be in your best interest to stick around for the next video because there is a lot more stuff, very shiny, sparkly things, and I would love to share them with you. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.